Hello, my friends. Long time no see, huh? I hope you've all been well while I've been away. I've certainly missed all of you. And, uh, welcome to the first video after my trip to Sanibel Island in Florida. This video will mostly just be voiceover with some light background video. You know, some background sounds whenever I feel like I can squeeze them in. But I thought this might be a nice relaxing way to ramble you all to sleep whilst providing some pleasant visuals to go along with it. And uh, I also want to let you all know that my normal schedule should be back. Obviously, with Christmas and such, some things might be subject to change, but, uh, you know, you know how it goes. And it's, it's alright. But, uh, I guess, if you guys are ready, we can get right into the video. So, we started driving down south very early in the morning. And before you ask, yes, me and my family always drive down and never fly. Primarily for money reasons, but at this point it's actually not even for money. It's because it's more of a tradition. We've been going to Florida almost every year since I was 13. And it's still one of my favorite places to vacation. I think the sunshine from the Sunshine State is infectious because I always find myself smiling a lot more when I'm down there. And even though we usually go to a similar spot on the Gulf every year, these past couple years have, well, we've had to change our locations due to Hurricane Ian's destruction of my parents' beloved condo. It's being rebuilt, but there are lots of things that take time. So, instead of staying there, we uh, went to our favorite place to visit when we're in Florida. And that is Sanibel Island. But, uh, I also got this delicious pink drink <laughs> at a gas station. I enjoy gas stations and, and rest stops because you never know what you might find. But before we knew it, um... You started to see palm trees and such, which I didn't get on video, sadly. But if you don't know what or where Sanibel Island is, it's a tiny tropical island off the coast of Florida with a wonderful atmosphere and lots of locals. An amazing nature preserve and lots and lots of seashells. The locals say that if you enjoy the slow lane, you come to Sanibel because everyone who lives there is in no hurry and uh, it's a wonderful place to wind down and, you know, join the rest of the people in the slow lane. Once we uh, got to our house on the island, I began exploring. One of my favorite things to do when I stay in new places is to investigate and explore my surroundings. The, uh, the lights worked. The decor was also quite, quite nice. And you'll see that this really, really cool anchor was on the wall. It's very pretty. Got a nice shot of it. And there were plants everywhere as well. And I liked this, uh, <laughs> this little uh, piece of artwork they had on the wall as well. Yep. Giving it the old thumbs up. I also like to uh, test the beds um, to make sure they're not, you know, 
They're firm, but not too firm. I was pretty satisfied with them. And more wonderful, beautiful plants. The, the outside was actually very, very nice. Our house had a very nice um, landscaping. I found that the whole place was nice. Jeremy found uh, his place as well. He had uh, fun adjusting to his surroundings, if you'd believe it. Before I knew it, things were going missing, and, uh, you know, you have to uh, assume it was Jeremy. That's just how he is. But uh, after eating a little something, we went straight to the beach. Yep, our house was a bit far from the actual beach front, but we rented bikes for the week, and that made getting around a lot easier. The ocean, or more accurately, the gulf, was gorgeous as always. Nothing on earth calms me the way the ocean does. There's something so peaceful about listening to the waves crash down on the warm sand over and over again. I've said it before, but uh, I believe I belong in the ocean. But it's not quite a reality just yet. Maybe someday. One thing that Sanibel is famous for is the incredible amount of seashells. And boy, did it deliver. If you have private beach access, the shelling is even better. But we spent a lot more time near the public beaches, and they still had so many. And I collected so many. My family told me I had to stop, because the car wouldn't fit anymore. <laughs> but I had so much fun trying to find every type of shell. I sadly don't really know the names, but regardless, it was a lot of fun. It's like treasure hunting. And here's a lot of crashing waves. And, um, I actually, on the gulf, the, the waves are, are pretty mild, but you still get to hear that nice sound when you're on the beach, and even when you're near the beach. And that's, that, that's really all that matters. Because I'm not like a huge ocean swimmer or anything. I like to watch people, um, you know, do their, their water sports and such. But uh, I myself prefer to stay on land and just listen and watch. This was, uh, this was like probably the second day, um, I believe this footage was taken. And we got pretty good weather for about half of the trip. And then after that, uh, it was very cloudy on and off. But, you know, you gotta take what you can get. And I took all of the sun I could. But after, uh, after the beach, we rented the bikes at some point. And I have a lot of recorded biking because I thought it would be nice to give you all a tour and I find the biking to be a, a pretty calming visual. We come to Sanibel to go biking every year because the uh, the many bike paths are and very flat terrain make it quite enjoyable. It's a wonderful way to get lost in beauty and nature but uh, know that getting lost is pretty much impossible on such a small plot of land. It's uh, also a wonderful exercise and a fun way to get around. Where I live, there are lots of hills that make many, many, many bike paths around where I live very difficult. So I don't do it very much, but honestly, I wish I could. And on Sanibel, the bike paths make biking much safer and more enjoyable because they are also often immersed in nature a bit more than the roads, so sometimes you feel like you're in the jungle or on a safari or something. It's a lot of fun. But uh, 
we didn't see too many animals on the main bike path. But uh, that's why you go to the preserve. Because that's where you go to see the animals. And uh, I believe that is pretty much where we went next. Which, let me just see. I believe that is. Yep. We started on our way to the preserve. And of course, I'm saying all this as if it was like on the same day or two, but this has actually been quite a, like a couple, three, three days, three days at this point. Um, there were a lot of breaks in between what I could actually record, which is fine. But, uh, but the reserve um, was the place that you could really start to see, like, the actual damages um, from Hurricane Ian. I did kind of want to go into that a little bit because um, last year, Florida, well, I, I should say the Gulf, um, where, where Sanibel Island and Fort Myers, which is where I usually vacation, um, they got hit pretty hard, like ground zero. Um, of the hurricane, and, um, our condo got wiped off the face of the planet, basically, and a lot of places on Sanibel did as well, so we kind of just had to adjust to that as best we could, and I'm speeding through some of this, because this is all on the way to the preserve, or reserve. Um, let's just see. Yeah, we pass a couple bikers as well. <laughs> There's a lot of bikers, but we actually found that it was pretty, pretty calm this time of the year. Like, there wasn't too, too many people. Sometimes it's really busy. And, uh, you know, honestly, seeing all of the, uh, the, uh, damage was a little sad. But at this point, you could tell that things were kind of growing back and, and getting back to normal. Like I said before, we go every year, and, uh, you know, you kind of just notice these things. You can see, um, on one side there, you can see the damage, like there's not as much greenery, and I kind of pulled over so you could see that a little bit. Um, but the other thing is, we've only ever seen an alligator at the, at the preserve one time. And that was the time that I could have been attacked. And there I am, getting out, taking a quick look. Just like, oh, are there any birds, any gators? We never see any. But uh, that story about the alligator is actually in a separate story time video, if you want to check it out. We sadly, I'm just going to spoil it right away, did not see any alligators. And uh, here's another quick zoop, 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 <laughs> of us finally getting there. But we saw a lot of birds, as you can see. And even though um, I didn't get too many videos of the birds, like I'm just doing this quick little panorama shot just trying to show you, and here's one that we saw, he was drying his wings. But even though we didn't get too many videos, I got a lot of photos. Um, so here are a few of them. There's that guy. And there was this blue one. Oh, look at them all. Aren't they pretty? Absolutely gorgeous. But um, then after that, we just kind of, we kind of kept biking. There were so many beautiful birds that I could barely put down my camera. And uh, that kind of, well, that made recording a lot harder because I was just so focused. And this is the tower, actually. Um, that we visit every time, and surprisingly, it didn't get damaged um, by the storm, which was kind of cool. Um, it was actually quite nice. And uh, then we just kind of continued our way around, and you can definitely tell there's just signs of, signs of, uh, you know, destruction everywhere. This used to be so much greener. I actually have other videos of me biking down this exact path. I wanted to try to find it, but 
I just don't have the time um, to sift through all my SD cards and such just to find that one clip. But you can just see, like, it's not nearly as green as it should be. But after that, we went to the local food mart, which is right here. Um, and they had a lot of cute little, like, decorations and stuff. I didn't get a lot of footage, but you can, you get the idea, I think. And, uh, the next day, we biked around some more. Just to explore a bit more of the island. Because we usually don't get to do that much exploring. Um, somebody passed me there. Um, she was actually very nice about it. She, she warned me way ahead of time. But yeah, we don't usually get to explore that much when we visit. We usually just rent bikes for the day and go straight to the preserve, um, which is about four miles long, and it takes four miles to get there, and then it's four miles back. So we usually are pretty whooped by the time we're done with that and don't really feel like exploring. But this year, because we actually stayed on the island, we were able to do much more exploring. Um, we also got to see a lot of the construction that was going on as they continued to rebuild what was destroyed over the, over a year ago now. And um, we also did do a bit more um, exploration of sites that we had usually like, stopped at before, which was quite a lot of fun. And, uh, I mean, some of it was a little sad because some of it got destroyed, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I actually have the footage of some of that. But here, um, just to drag this out a little bit, um, you know, the, these, these paths, if you look, like, to the side there, um, into the, into the mangroves, you can see so many birds and other animals as well. Like, I, I had to have seen probably, I don't know, 30, 40 different birds just perched up on the branches. And you have to kind of look, and sometimes you'll see me wobbling because I'm trying to look, and then I lose my balance a little bit. Um, but, yeah, it's a lot of fun. There's just something so freeing and, and exciting about biking around and it brings me back to childhood when I got my first bike and that was like the first like real sense of freedom and you kind of go back to that when you do this. All of a sudden it's like you have all the freedom to just go where you want to go on this island and it's all pretty flat and easy. Um, and that is quite fun. But uh, we also did get to stop at our, well, <laughs> our old favorite restaurant. Um, which was called the Island Cow, and found that it had apparently burned down before we, uh, well, before the hurricane actually hit, and I think we're coming up on it right here. And you can see that yellowish sign right there, the pastel yellow, that's the, that's the Island Cow, and this is where it was. And as you can see, there is no building there. It was pretty sad because we didn't get to go there this year, but we ate at plenty of other restaurants, and it was pretty fun. And it was a bit sad, but, you know, you, you just gotta deal with it. But, uh, after that, we did actually go to the ocean. Uh, we went to the public beach, and there was a lot of destruction. Uh, you can tell that it hit hard there. And I took a look around, and, you know, I also got some cool drone shots, which you'll see in a minute. Um, and, you know, it's, it is sad seeing so many things disappear, but at the same time, it was also so heartwarming to see how diligently things were getting put back together. And how pretty the ocean is still. Because no matter what, the ocean is always beautiful. But, uh, I think you'll see at this point, yeah. <laughs> I was very excited to finally be, like, on the, the public beach, their big public beach. So we took a, took a pretty good, uh, long walk around. But here's the drone shot of the island. Um, this is pretty close to the actual beachfront, um, where we were. I flew the drone pretty far away, so I kind of got a lot of shots of things that we weren't really that close to. 
but uh, you can see a lot of the buildings are still standing. You can see the greenery is definitely coming back in a lot of places, which is also very, very nice. It made me very happy to see that. Very, very happy. And oh, look at, are those ants walking down there? But here's another little pan shot of some of the buildings um, that did get a little bit damaged. You can't really see in the shot, but like the windows are gone. Um, and that was a little bit sad. And I was also finding quite a few seashells, so <laughs> I picked up quite a few while we were there. And here's just a shot of actually right there in the horizon is Fort Myers. Um, which is where we usually vacation. Uh, we do most of our vacationing there. That's where the, our old condo was. Um, and you can see the lighthouse uh, just in the corner there. And in a minute you'll see um, a closer up shot of it. I was very, very happy um, to know that the lighthouse actually survived. But apparently it's built pretty well because it survived like a lot of the... Uh, of the uh, storm like it really didn't even look too damaged some of the paint and like it's kind of rusty stuff but um overall not too bad and this was just pretty because we had some wind and i like to watch the sand but uh here's the lighthouse and you can see it's kind of rusted but it's still there it's still intact um it was nice to be able to say hello to the lighthouse once again Hello, Lighthouse. But, uh, you can start to see some of the damage, um, to the, to the mangroves and to the, um, actual foliage over there. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute as well. But, uh, look at that beautiful Lighthouse. I do love Lighthouses. I don't know why. There's just something so magical about them. And just some more pretty shots of the beautiful grasses and beach but here is the destruction and you can just tell right like there's a significant amount of um, destroyed foliage and uh, trees and you can't see here but there's a lot of garbage um, and rubble mixed in with all of that um, like a lot of bags a lot of human you know just the debris <laughs> But uh, hopefully next year it's better. Oh my gosh, it's skipping around on me. Look at this. This is one of the massive shells I found. Um, and I tried to listen for the ocean, but look at how big it is. I could not believe how lucky I was to find this. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> I know. I couldn't believe my eyes when I came across it. It's actually the biggest shell I've ever found. Absolutely gorgeous. I love shells so much. They are a true example of the natural artistry of the world. You can see here are some more that I found. Um, these guys were very pretty as well. I found a lot though. Like I have three bags full of shells. If you want to see a video of my shell collection, um, you're more than welcome to suggest that. I might actually consider it. Um, and here is just so, 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 so many. And I, I used my macro lens to get some really close-up shots of, of the, how detailed and crazy these shells are. Look at them. Almost hypnotizing. And, uh, well, Jeremy found some shells, too. <laughs> oh, Jeremy. But after that, um... I wanted to squeeze in some more relaxation because uh, this was our last day, full day. So I did some sunbathing, sat by the pool a lot, you know, just kind of enjoyed myself. It was enjoyable, it was nice. The pool was a little cold, um, it was not a heated pool which I was hoping for. Here was a big old palm tree that was next to the place we stayed at. Yep. And, um, you know, after that, we 
we we we basically hit the uh, the bikes again, but uh, it's it's very calming watching the water, isn't it? But after that, we hit some of my favorite shops, which is the shell shop, which I did not get a lot of footage of, and then after that, we went to um, a restaurant. Um, Mud Bugs is what it was called, which had some great food and a really fun, entertaining atmosphere. We joked around, laughed, ate food, and before we knew it, we were taking our final bike ride back to the beach house. It was a wonderfully quiet night for a bike ride. And I think I'm actually just going to stay quiet for the majority of this as I find it quite relaxing, and uh, hopefully you will too. morning. <laughs> yeah, it rained in Florida. I'd like to think um, it was because it was sad to see us go, but who knows? We, uh, we packed our bags, wrestled Jeremy into the car, and um, began our road trip back home. It was, uh, it was always, it's always a little sad on the, uh, the way out of a wonderful vacation. But, uh, it's okay. It's what makes them special, is at the end. And, uh, I, I, I waved goodbye to the island as we, uh, went by some of my favorite locations. And, uh, we 
continued along our way. Jeremy also, you know, enjoyed uh, sticking his head out the window, which was interesting. Um, but he seemed like he was okay with uh, the end of the vacation. He was keeping us all in higher spirits. I uh, waved one final goodbye as we drove over the bridge to the mainland. And, uh, that was it. Goodbye, Sanibel. Again, I always get kind of sad whenever our yearly vacation ends. I miss Florida all the time. I have so many treasured memories there. And it's where I spent some of the best times of my childhood. Of which I hold very dear. But, uh, it's always something to go back to and continue to have more amazing adventures. And, uh, that's it for me, my friends. But, uh, I have this video I took of the waves crashing onto the beach that I will leave you with in case some of you aren't asleep yet. I found it very, very calming. I already watched it. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I can't wait to get back to my usual schedule of videos. And I can't wait for the holidays. I'm so excited. Anyway, I love you all.